Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Saints won the preseason opener against the Chiefs. Uh, Dennis Allen afterward had uh, these thoughts about uh, the Houdats getting a win and comeback fashion against Kansas City. Our first units, both offensively and defensively, really came out strong and played well. It was good to see, you know, the offense, first drive of the game, take it right down the field, 11 plays, get a touchdown. Obviously, with a few new pieces, it was good to see Derek out there. It was good to see Mike get a catch across the middle, you know, so there were some good things that happened there. I thought our second series offensively, again, we were able to take the ball down the field and and, and get points. And, and and then really, honestly, I thought it kind of went downhill from there. I don't think we executed very well for a good, you know, good chunk of the game. And then, you know, obviously there at the end with the kind of two minute drive, you know, and then and then we get the we get the takeaway there at the end of the game to, to seal it. Uh, Sean Fazan, Fox 8 in New Orleans was in the Dome. Good enough to join us for a couple minutes here. How are you, man? Doing good, man. How are you? Doing very well. Uh, if you had one big overriding takeaway from uh, from the win over Kansas City, what would it be? Uh, the start was quite good. Um, I, I thought the opening drive was – when I was watching it live, it, it obviously looked good. And then when I went back and watched it on film this morning, I felt even better about it. I mean, there was a little bit of everything on that drive. The offensive line played well. Kamara looked, looked fast. Um, they, Michael Thomas was getting double coverage, which opened up, uh, you know, passes to guys like Jawan Johnson and even Keith Kirkwood on the touchdown. Like Derek Carr was able to get his progressions; he was accurate, looked completely in command. Um, I thought overall, it really was a lot in, in a twelve play drive. A lot of things, a lot of scenarios, kind of popped up, and uh, just a little glimpse in terms of you know what it could look like. You know, with Derek Carr running the show at, at quarterback, and it kind of just gave you a little bit of a. Uh, He's had a smooth start to camp, and it was, I guess, it was pretty good to see. You know, this is the next phase in the training camp to preseason sort of, I guess you call it development. And I guess it was good to see a, a confirmation of what we've seen first couple weeks of practice. So the Saints get the touchdown on the first drive, but then the defense gets the fourth down stop on Kansas mm -hmm. City's first drive with Patrick Mahomes. Which do you think seeing the success was more important for the offense or the defense early? That's a tough, that's a good question. I'm going to go offense just because so much has been put into the obviously the addition of of Derek Carr and uh, and you know some other pieces and the return of Michael Thomas and um, the, the the true belief that this offense is going to be much better you know this season. It would have really would not have. It, I guess it wouldn't have mattered if they didn't start great. But the fact they did start off great, I think it just it it just helped you know just kind of. I guess you can't say solidify a few things. It's very early. We all know that. You don't want to, you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. But I, I just think just given the investment at the quarterback position and the overall just good energy that they've felt all off season and into the training camp portion about their offense, I think that was probably uh, good to see. They, last year defensively, uh, they had a pretty good pass defense. Now run, run defense is pretty tough. And yeah. I thought defensively, especially against the run, they played well, at least early in the game. So I don't want to discount that at all because I think that's huge as well. But I think of those two, I would have to go with the offense. Uh, speaking of the defense, uh, I was kind of hoping to see more from the top two draft picks, Brian Brzee and Isaiah Foskey. I mean, it's a lot of draft capital invested in your defensive line, and neither recorded a stat. Um, at what point do you start to be concerned about those two guys? Well, Foskey's not had a good camp, so the the fact that he didn't re he didn't record a stat is um, not surprising. He he's got some development to go. He he's not ready. Um, I would beg to differ a little bit on Brian Brzee, just because if you look at the first interception uh, with uh, Alante Taylor, he's the guy that's in the face of the quarterback uh, to kind of force the Aaron throw, and there's the, the tip pass, and he got in the game early, I think in that first passing situation, so he got some first-team reps in that pass-rushing situation. Um, he, had, he had a couple moments where he was moved off his landmark and uh, gave up a, you know, a run, but I think all in all, it was I, I didn't think it was a bad day for Brian Brzee. I thought he had a moment or two where it looked okay, but you know, both those guys still have some development to do, but in Foskey's case, he's just he's significantly behind where um, the other guys are at that position. And Brzee's been rotating in uh, with the first team, and I think the rotation you've seen at practice was pretty similar to what we saw in the first two drives of the game. Um, Sean Fazan is with us on Twitter at Sean Fazan Fox Eight. Uh, 
I think so often we focus on the rookies because it's their first time out there and it's always just intriguing to see them. Rookies and then obviously the free agent acquisitions. The um, uh, the other rookie that would be notable, of course, is Kendra Miller, who left with an injury. Can you give us any type of update on on Miller based on what Dennis Allen said or what you may know of or have heard? Yeah, I mean, there was a report out today that it, they expect him back by opening week. I guess we'll see. They just signed Daryl Williams, according to one report uh, today. Obviously, you guys know uh, you guys know very well. I think it was Nick Underhill that reported that just a few minutes ago or uh, about a half hour ago. Uh, so uh, certainly, they need some they need some some players in that running back room with you know you know Benjamin going down and obviously Kendra Miller being injured. But certainly, sounds like at least right now there's some optimism uh, surrounding his injury. Um, and then obviously you have Alvin Kamara who's going to be suspended for the first three weeks of the season. So. That's certainly something to monitor um, with Kendra Miller because I know he had he had done some things in practice where it felt like he was really uh, taking some strides within this offense. Hopefully, he's not out for long and kind of set back his development a little bit because he's had um, a pretty decent start to camp so far. So I guess we'll have to wait and see with the severity of that injury. Uh, it was interesting, Sean, because last week they worked out Kareem Hunt, and sometimes I think we do sort of. Uh, get intoxicated with the big names, and mm-hmm. Kareem Hunt will qualify. Uh, we saw Ezekiel mm-hmm. Elliott today sign with New England. Leonard Fournette is still out there. And so they add Darrell Williams, who who's had a nice career, but mm-hmm. but is certainly no one's going to confuse him for a bell cow back. What, does, what do you make, if anything, of the Saints going the route to sign a Darrell Williams instead of maybe a more established lead back type player like Hunt or, or Fournette or someone like that? Well, hey, I think they have confidence in Jamal Williams, who I think they're going to, you know, lean on heavily the first three weeks without, you know, Alvin Kamara. Um, B, they need they need players. I mean, they just, they just need players to contribute in the in the room. They got practices, you know, joint practices coming up. They got a couple of more games coming up uh, preseason wise. They certainly need some guys that can certainly get some reps. And obviously, we saw, you know, Ellis Merriweather had a nice, you know, finish to the game as well. So I'm sure he'll be. You know, circulate in the mix. The Kareem Hunt situation, that was very real interest. I mean, very real interest. Probably, um, you know, there could have been a sign. That was just a weird development that had happened uh, with, you know, as you mentioned, a guy that's a premier name. So I think, you know, that that could have happened. It just didn't based off a bit of a bizarre circumstance. But you got to move on with what's next. And, you know, look, they brought Williams in for the workout. Clearly he did okay to get the, uh, to get you know, the contract with the Saints. And we'll see what happens. I, I have... I don't. I mean, like you said, he's had a nice, you know, career for himself. But you know, I don't expect him to come in and you know be the lead back. But I do think there is some confidence in Jamal Williams. And look, you know, if if, if it is true and Miller's status is is it's just going to be temporary, he's out. Then you know he'll he'll come back at some point and, and get the reps he was normally getting. Uh, Sean, last thing for you. Uh, what are the? How does this week work with um, the Saints are, are playing in LA against the Chargers? They're going to do some joint practices, right? How does this week? work compared to other camp week schedules? Well, they'll have a, a night practice tomorrow, an evening practice tomorrow here in New Orleans, and then obviously they'll fly out uh, to uh, to L.A. on Wednesday, and on Thursday and Friday they'll do their joint practices with the Chargers. In years past, that first practice was always a little bit more intense. Um, you can't bring quarterbacks to the ground or anything like that, but obviously you're going up against another team, you get some more situations in. It does get a little more, a little livelier, and all the players, all the players will tell you they get more out of those joint practices than the actual games most of the time, especially the established guys, because we don't know if you know how long or if they're going to even play in the second and third preseason game. And then Friday, I guess in this situation, practice two is generally a little bit uh, of a lighter workload, and then they have the rest day on Sunday. They do the walk, Saturday, they do the walkthrough, and obviously Sunday is the game. It's pretty. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. The Saints have done this a couple of years before. Uh, they've had these joint practices with the Chargers at the facility in Costa Mesa. Pretty nice facility. I know they like it. I know the. You know, I guess the weather will certainly help yeah. uh, out there. So, because it is hot, as you know, down here, uh, Matt. So, all in all, they're looking forward to a a big week. And this is a big stretch when you go from that first preseason game into joint practices, another preseason game, more joint practices, and the final preseason game. This is a big stretch to see. I have a good, you know, feel about where your team is with, you know, certain players and certain depth pieces. So this is a big stretch coming up here for the thing. Uh, he's on Twitter at Sean Fazan Fox Eight. Go give him a follow. Great stuff as always, man. We appreciate a couple minutes. All right, man. I appreciate it.
Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.